airborne. So while you had the plate open, and let's say this is a TSA plate, um, you'd be amazed at how many microbes are in the air. And certainly this should give us a huge appreciation for our immune systems protecting us from all the microbes in the air. So when you have the plates off, we have all different kinds of airborne microbes, spo fungal spores, um, endospores dropping onto your plates. Because even though microbes are very tiny and they don't weigh much, they do have some mass, okay, and they will fall on your plates. Now, one thing I like to think about to make this more meaningful is imagine that the surface of your otter oops, sorry, represents um, maybe your, um, an open wound or maybe a burn on a patient or maybe it's the open surgical site during surgery. And just imagine the same airborne microbes are dropping down into that tissue, presume. So it gives you an idea for you know, issues of contamination. Now, if the microbes that land on the surface of the auger, if they have the transport protein, they can transport nutrients from the auger into, across the cytoplasmic membrane. If you have the enzymes to break down those nutrients, they can start growing and dividing. Okay, so following your incubation, if the microbes can use the nutrients in the auger to grow and divide, they'll start growing and dividing making these populations of genetic clones. And these populations of genetic clones we call colonies. We can actually see them with our naked eye. Okay, so um, we can go from, for example, from one cell to 10 to the 8th to 10 to the 9th cells in one of those colonies. And again, you know, we think of all the members of the colony as being genetic clones of one another. They've all descended from the same initial microbe that landed on the plate. But we just learned in um, class that um, members of those, that little colony, they'll have some slight genetic variations. Because remember, every time the bacteria, they copy their DNA, they're going to have a few mistakes. Okay, but we still presume that um, all the members of a colony descended from a single microbe landing on the plate. Okay, so maybe this cell grew into this colony, and we'll, we'll use some colors here. That cell grew into this colony, and we'll just use one more. Let's say this cell grew into this colony. Okay. So this brings up another feature of um, microbes. We say that different types of microbes will form different types of colony. The colonies will differ according to size, to pigment production, shape, surface qualities. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have you count the total number of colonies on your plates. And we will enter that data in your lab manual. Okay. So on page 94 of your lab manual, you'll see that there are two tables for the data. You're going to plug them in the and the first table, table one on page 94, this is where you're going to record the total number of colonies on your plate. Okay, so every colony, every little colony that you can see with your naked eye, and it doesn't depend on its size. It can be the size of a pinhead, or it can be the size of a nickel. Okay, they all count as single colonies. So you're going to count the total number of colonies and enter it in the data table. And what we want you to think about, if you turn the page to the study guide questions, on page 96, you're asked to um, uh, draw a rough graph comparing um, the number of colonies over time. And what we're hoping that you'll see is that by increasing the exposure time, you'll get roughly a doubling in the number of colonies that are growing. Now, what's the significance? Just thank you guys in uh, surgery. A really good surgeon will try to keep surgery time as short as possible, not only to reduce you know, anesthetic risk for the patient, but also to reduce the possibility of airborne contamination of the surgical site. Right? Mm -hmm. Likewise with sterile <coughs> instruments. When you remove sterile instruments from the protective packaging, the longer the sterile instruments are exposed to air, the greater is the chance of contamination. Right? So this actually has you know, real life application. Okay, so that's the total number of colonies. Now, um, table two, 
you're going to count the total number of different types of colonies, the varieties of colonies. And if we use our little example here, let's say that we are, we'll look down on the surface of that plate. Okay, so colony types. Let's say we're looking down on that plate. Okay. And maybe we have one colony type, little pin-sized non-pigmented colonies. And maybe we'll have a second colony type that I'll show just as these irregular orange colonies. And perhaps we'll have um, a big red pigmented colony type here as well. Okay. So just so we can practice, if we ask for the total number of colonies, you just count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So total count, total colony count, So the presumption is nine microbes landed on the plate were able to grow from the colonies. But now if we ask for the number of colony types or varieties, how many varieties do we have growing? Three. Three, three right? Okay, there's the white one, that's one. The red ones, that's two. The orange one, that's three. So we have three total types. And again, because we say that different types of microbes will form different types of colonies, this would suggest we have three different types of microbes growing on our plate. It gives us an idea of the variety of microbes growing on our plates. Okay. Now, we are presuming that you'll have more colonies and a greater variety of types on the TSA medium. And the reason is the Saperotes media is it's selective for fungi. Okay. So the TSA media should have both bacteria and fungi growing on it. The Saperos plate, we would predict that most bacteria will be inhibited. They won't be able to grow. So we're going to, um, on the Saperos, we predict most of those colonies will be fungal, either yeasts or molds. Okay. So mm -hmm. do make sure, you guys, you don't open your plates because mm -hmm. a lot of those molds will be making spores. And if you open the plates, you're going to get a big nose full of spores. Okay, and we know that can trigger allergic reactions mm -hmm. and, um, and also to add to the contamination of our lab. All right. So um, what um, the, the last little tidbit we wanted to do was to take a look at, again, the 10 questions. Page 95, it asks you to go a step further. And it asks you to choose four different types of colonies and describe them using conventional terms. So I just want to walk through those conventional terms with you guys. And we're going to try to really simplify this. Um, if you look at most micro books, you'll see that for each of these, um, each of these characteristics, often there's five or six different adjectives that are used. We're going to really simpl simplify this because I don't want you spending too much time on it. So let's just let's just do it step by step. Be aware that you could be asked to do this on the lab practical, and also for your um, unknown, you will be describing different types of quality. So this is a skill that you want to develop. Okay, so we'll just take this step by step. The first row asks you to measure the size of the colony, and you always want to report your measurements in millimeters. So the way you would do this is you would um, take your metric rule, and I'll go find some metric rule. Oh, good, we have our metric rule right here. To measure the diameter of a colony, you're going to flip the plate over, okay, hold it up to the light, and then you're going to use your metric ruler to measure the diameter in millimeters. And remember, the diameter is a distance from um, border to border across the central point, across the midpoint. Okay, so you always want to record your diameters in millimeters. Mm -hmm. So make, make sure you can use your metric rules, because we'll have a station like that on the uh, lab practice. Pigment, the next row, that's simply what color the colony is. If the colony is white, we use the term non-pigmented. If it's any other color, any other color other, other than white, you simply describe the color. So is it orange pigment, red pigment, brown pigment, purple pigment? We next go down to shape. And again, we're trying to simplify this, so I'll, I'll try to do this on, the, um, on our paper here.
shape, we're going to simplify to just three descriptive terms, and we're using circular, irregular, or, or rhizoid, or filamentous. So circular is just as it suggests. The shape, the overall shape, is circular. Irregular is that if it's not a circle, something like that, irregular. And filamentous or rhizoid is like little branches or little roots. So this would be filamentous or rhizoid. You could use either term. Okay. Now the next property that we're going to take a look at is the margin or the border of the colony. So the margin or the border of the colony. And the terms we have there are entire, undulate, or rhizoid. We're going to simplify you guys to entire, undulate, or rhizoid. So entire, undulate, or rhizoid. Okay. And again, what we're doing is we're focusing in, um, if this is our colony, we're focusing in on the border right there. Okay. So entire is nice and smooth. It's a nice smooth border all the way around. Undulate is like waves, so wavy like that. And rhizoid is like little branches coming off. Okay, so like that. Okay, so that's the three type three types of borders. And again, we're simplifying this. Okay. What else do we have? Now, elevation to me is always hilarious. I always think of this Gary Larson cartoon. You know, like the primitive caveman microbiologist. You're like, hmm, how? What's your elevation? So to me, that's like been a little bit funny. <laughs> so we're, we're just going to, again, we're going to try to simplify it. So elevation, okay, and this would be, pretend this is the auger right here. So flat is the cells are just growing very, very close to the, um, to the auger. Okay. And again, if this is the auger, if we have like a little mountain, that's going to be convex. And the other one is really a fun one. It's called umbanet. It's like a little fried egg or like a little outie belly button. And what happens is we get cells piling up in the middle and then we have less dense concentration of cells along the side. So yeah. it looks like a little outie belly button, right? right? <laughs> or if it's the bird's eye view, it looks like a fried egg. So if you're looking down on it, I'm gonna, it looks like a little fried egg. A little yolk in the middle. Okay, so that those are all the elevations we'll use. And don't can't don't don't spend too much time you guys worrying about elevation, okay? Because like I said, it's like it's too large too. Now, the surface texture um, is if if we're looking at the surface of the col colony itself, so the texture is it smooth? Is the colony, the surface of the colony nice and smooth? Is it rough? Okay, so it looks irregular like that. Or is it grainy or powdery? So it would be like, that's off, we often see grainy or powdery associated with fungal colonies. And the little grains, of course, are the spores or the sporangia that are being formed, okay? And let me see for another one. Surface appearance. Surface appearance is how light is reflected. Okay, so you're going to hold your colonies under the light. Just let the light shine on the surface. If you see the light shining back, we're just going to use shiny or glistening. If light is reflected, and if light is not reflected, we'll just call them dull. Okay, so no, no light's reflected. Optical properties is when you're going to hold your plate up to the light. And you're going to see how much light passes through your colony. Okay, so the first one there, transparent, is like it would be like glass. Like you could actually read. You could, if you put your colony over some text, say on the paper, if your colony is transparent, you could actually read the text through the colony. Okay, so that's transparent. If you hold it up to the light, and some light gets through, some light is getting through, but it's not clear like glass. That would be considered um, translucent. Okay. And if you hold your colony up to the light and no light passes through at all, that's called opaque. So those are the, um, the characteristics we're going to use to describe our colony. 
And then you see at the bottom row there, it's just space for you to draw the colony. Okay. And again, folks, um, on the lab practical, there'll be a station where we'll have probably one of the airborne micro plates. We'll have maybe two or three colonies circled and labeled colony A, B, and C. And what we do is we'll ask you to describe, for example, describe the margin of colony B. Describe the surface texture of colony C. Describe the size of colony A. Okay. So you do want to be familiar with what the terms mean. But I, I don't want you to spend hours and hours on this, okay? Just like trying to put it in perspective. Okay. All right, you guys. So what we'll do then is we'll let you guys um, get to work. Um, so you want to share the results with your team. You can split the plates up, you know, so that everybody in the team is counting um, total numbers and varieties. Yes, Make sure you, you share your data. If you have, if you have um, colleagues that are missing, you might want to stick your plates in your locker so they can see the plates. If you're all finished with the airborne plates, you want to take them together and put them in the autoclave bag. Okay, put them in the biohazard bag um, if you don't want to hold on to them. Okay, and do make sure to wash your hands, you guys, because you've amplified some potential pathogens on those airborne plates. Okay? What is this Sorry, guys. What is this? Smooth. 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 I know. And what I was trying to